In 2015, I left a full-time job to care for my new baby, and I haven't been back to the office since. I've worked freelance jobs where possible, mostly at night, but for almost a decade, my day job has been the work of care. I spent the early years of motherhood listening to politicians and advocates constantly discussing how to get people like me back to full-time work. The workforce participation graphs were a constant reminder that I was a problem for the economy and for equality. I couldn't understand why the most important work of my life, caring for my children and raising them, was considered a waste of my time and education. As a new mother, it was an incredibly alienating and disheartening experience. Then a result from the 2021 census stopped me in my tracks. Just 6.5% of parents with children under 15 said they would increase their work hours if childcare were cheaper or more accessible. The remaining 93.5% either reported no childcare related barriers or a preference to care for their own children at least some of the time. At this point, most parents won't actually use more childcare and this is a very different story to the one we are sold in our daily lives. I realised I wasn't alone in wanting time with my kids and seeing the value in that. This is why the Productivity Commission recently found labour supply is no longer very responsive to childcare expansion. We can think of parents as an elastic band that has been stretched out since childcare subsidies began increasing labour supply in Australia in the 70s. The elastic band can only stretch so far before it snaps. There are only so many hours in the day. The census figures were backed up by another large survey run by Hilda, Hilda, Household Income and Labor Dynamics Australia. Hilda confirmed last year that only 16% of mothers reported wanting or needing to increase their paid workload. It also found that almost 40% of women were chronically stressed. Parents are spread thin and any remaining increases in labor supply now stand to come almost exclusively from mothers of children in the zero to four age group. The push for equal workforce participation and economic growth has turned into a ruthless march earlier and earlier into motherhood and childhood. Women have made extraordinary contributions to the workplace and we will continue to do so, but we are doing enough. It is time to stop treating women as a problem to be solved. It's time to explore how better supporting our unpaid labor can both strengthen the economy and improve equality measures. Not only is labour supply no longer very responsive to childcare policy, the Productivity Commission was also unable to show that expanding childcare at this point could make kids more productive citizens in the long run. Targeted, high quality programs have been shown to benefit disadvantaged children. There's also good evidence in favour of preschool programs for all children aged three to five. But once we start looking at universal programs for the general population from birth, the evidence thins out. When childcare is delivered at scale, quality is often lost and return on investment can dwindle to the point that it may no longer justify the cost. This is particularly the case for babies and toddlers who require intensive, costly care. And this is why universal childcare programs typically exist alongside paid parental leaves of 12 months or more. It's not just nice for parents and babies, it's smart policy. So if childcare is no longer the economic silver bullet it once was, and if most parents feel they are using enough childcare, doing enough, we must start looking at the bigger picture. Parents increasing work hours has coincided with a declining birth rate, which presents a whole new set of economic challenges. We've also seen an overall decline in many health and cognitive measures in recent decades. It's becoming clear that if you want resilient and productive members of society, if you want to stabilise the birth rate, you must give parents time to parent. Extending paid and unpaid parental leave is the most obvious way of doing this, but there are, an, there are an array of policies beyond cash benefits that can support parents. Childcare is important, but it is just one tool at our disposal. It is not the entire toolbox, and it's not always the best tool for the job. Parenting is by far, thank you. <clears throat> Parenting is by far the strongest determinant of childhood outcomes. We can be such an extraordinary force for good. 
but we need support beyond using a daycare centre. This is how our better story begins. I'm imagining a future where my kids aren't made to feel like a drain on society while contributing vital care work, where they actually feel valued and supported as parents, a future where they aren't ashamed to say they are at home caring for children, as I have been. I'm looking forward to a future where work in the home is more equally shared between parents and where both mothers and fathers get to see their children during business hours. Supported parents are better able to care for their children, but they are also more likely to have more kids. Data from around the world shows paid parental leave policies exceeding six months have a positive effect on fertility rates. However, parental leave policies seem to be losing this effectiveness in countries where childcare is cheap and used early and extensively. On the surface, this makes no sense. Why would countries with world-leading family policy be unable to halt falling fertility rates? It comes back to the issue of time. Universal childcare programs that start at one year old create a cultural expectation that children will start care at this age. It becomes a societal norm that parents have less time with very young children on a weekly basis. Having fewer kids may be a response, a natural response, to having less time with them, or knowing you'll have less time with them. It may also be a response to knowing that time with them will be increasingly difficult to justify financially. Universal childcare systems might increase earning power, but they don't seem to improve the overall parenting experience. Childcare policies have, set out to do, have done exactly what they set out to do, increase workforce participation but the ride is coming to an end. We are beginning to see that there is a limit to how much we can lift workforce participation while also sustainably reproducing the population. Many countries around the world are now overreaching on lifting labour supply, and it's backfiring. In Australia, that overreach is evident, and had it not been for the baby bonus, widely considered responsible for lifting birth rates back up to around replacement rate, the fertility decline we are now experiencing would be much worse. Australians responded to this policy, and this is why other pronatal policies should be up for discussion in Australia. Hungary's pronatal policies have lifted birth rates in the past decade. The recently introduced income tax concessions for mothers will reduce gender inequalities in lifetime earnings by better compensating women for reproductive labour. It's not just about getting women to do more or different or the right kind of work. It's counting the vital work they already do every day. It's acknowledging that reproductive and care labour has profound implications for entire nations and economies. But rather than investing in supporting parents to parent, our main solution to declining fertility rates has been to import people raised in the unpaid care economies of other countries. Migration has given Australia a steady stream of ready-made workers without having to invest more in our domestic production of human capital. Relying too heavily on the quick fix of migration has caught up with us in the form of sudden rapid population increases causing huge logistic and infrastructure challenges. Increasing native births is a vital opportunity to stabilise the population and grow sustainably. <laughs> I'm not quite finished yet, sorry. <laughs> Children aren't just important to society as future workers. Their, their presence alone is critical to the social fabric in ways that, we can no longer, um, that can no longer be taken for granted. Children represent hope and our future. They bring vibrancy and colour to our lives. It's well established in research that just the presence of children increases the pro-social behaviour of adults. They have a unique ability to bring out the best in us. This is more than a policy issue, it's a cultural issue. We are products of a culture that has devalued the work of care for too long. I was raised in the boss babe era, where mothers at home were depicted in popular culture as sad alcoholics. Declining birth rates could be considered a natural consequence of decades of ridiculing and dismissing the work of parents inside the home. While we can challenge these attitudes at an individual level, a top-down approach is now also necessary. Policy has the power to legitimise the care contribution and challenge negative attitudes to parenting and care work. When we steadily deplete the unpaid care economy, which underpins our well-being, social fabric, and the market economy, we should expect productivity to stagnate and birth rates to fall. We didn't see this coming because we failed to assign value to the unseen work of care. 
If mothers and parents remain overburdened, the welfare and public health costs will end up outweighing economic gains that may have been achieved. We will continue to pay for time scarcity in the form of managing mental health issues, chronic disease and social supports. It will require creativity and bravery to properly investigate ways to strike a productive balance between work and care. Thank you.